Churches today don't fear God. Prosperity, money, women, notoriety, popularity, all that took the place of God. God has been dwindled down to a painting. Some little black or white Jesus hanging on the wall or hanging on the cross. So many Hebrew Israelites, and they say, you know, all of them don't cuss me out, but a lot of them do, and I'm thankful for that. Mm. Some said, I really enjoy that man. That's right. But why is it that man just won't say Jesus is black? Here's your answer. Jesus was a Nazarene. And of course, Nazareth, of course, people was of color. All right. Jesus came out of a region of color. What's the big deal? What do I care if he was black? What's the big deal? What do I care if he was black? What's the big deal? What do I care if he was black? Right. Yes, I do know he was not a European. He came from a region where people was of color like I am. But why I don't preach about that? Because his skin color was never a topic of interest to the apostles or the prophets. If Jesus was my complexion, or Dan complexion. What would we get out of it? Hear me, hear me, human family. The black Jesus, his blackness don't mean nothing. That's right. You know what means something of importance about Jesus? His, his teaching. That's right. And his life. That's right. Now to my Hebrew Israelite brothers, if you really believed in Jesus, uh -oh. how in the world can you be out on the street with such a foul cussing mouth? That's right. Calling passerbyers, MFs, and SOBs. God don't have DAM attached to him. No. Am I right, I say? Yes, sir. I want to give all the praises and the honor to Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shah Bahashem, Rechaha Kwadash and double honors to the elder apostles and elder bishops of Great Millstone. Honors also to you, brethren, you followers of the truth, and uh, shalom to the elect. So anyway, I want to go on this video here with this guy, uh, Pastor Gino Jennings, who has managed to take a little bit of Hebrew Israelite faith, twirl it around, connect a little Christianity, twirl it around, mix it together in a blender and then pour it and spread it all back out and create his own kind of doctrine. I did the research on this guy, right? That's what he does. He started off in a, a basement church. So he was destined to be a Christian pastor with a twist and a spin. So some of the things he is correct on according to the Bible, but it goes into things that we teach. And clearly you can see in this church, you got the women with the head wraps and the coverings. You see what these people do? But anyway, these guys said that Jesus, Yahawashi, let me say that, color doesn't matter. It wasn't, it wasn't uh, something that was important or even necessary. Why wasn't it? Because everybody knew at that time, Yahawashi, and arrest was uh, of a complexion, but he had a unique complexion. This is why John the Revelator, I'm just quoting this, Revelation 1 and 14, 1 and 2. Well, you know what? Um, I know it. Let's get John 8 and 32 first. It says, uh, and ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. So you have to know the truth to be freed, right? So let's go to Revelation 1, and let's start at 2. Now, everybody's trying to debunk all this now, right? This has been, it wasn't a problem when white Jesus was up. Now, it's a problem when we see Yahweh Shah being uh, a so-called black man. Now, Geno Jennings and all the Christians, so what, right? <laughs> That's the sick part. Anyway, um, Revelation 1 and 1, the revelation of Yahweh Shah, some say Jesus, 
which God, Yahweh, gave unto him, right, to shew unto the servants things which must shortly come to pass. And because he knew that we was going to go through this, right? And he sent and signified it by his angel unto his servant, John, who bear record of the word of Yahweh and of the testimony of Yahweh Shad, as they say, Jesus Christ, and all of the things he saw, right? So this is a, a understanding of that. Revelation 1 and 14, his head and his hairs were white like wool. And then you get these people now, the Christians saying, well, it's white like wool. Is that Why? Because it's not wool, it's like wool, right? Wool fits uh, uh, the, the animal. Or when you look at the word wool in the Old English, it meant hair of the Negroes anyway. Uh, anyway, um, so it says white like wool, which means it wasn't a stringy hair, okay? As white as snow. His eyes was a flame of fire. And this is what another, the Christians don't understand. It it, it could be, it can go to showing as a, a physical thing to a metaphorical thing, right? Because it's still saying that in the sentence. His head and his hairs were white like wool. Understand it to be like wool, that would be the texture of it. And as white as snow, right? That's why it says white as snow, because his hair wasn't snow. But it was white as snow, okay? And it says, and his eyes were as a flame of fire. You see the same thing, a reddish, right? And his feet like unto fine brass. Now, when you look at fine brass, it is not copper. Copper, the color of a penny is brass to a degree. When you look at fine brass, it is very dark, pure uh, complexion. And then it goes on to even say as if it had burned in a furnace. So we could clearly see the Most High made his son very, very melanated. He was the top example of a man on the earth and what a man should pretty much uh, look like, okay? Or be this man is head over the rest of the men on the planet. This is the son of the most high. So how can you say the complexion doesn't matter? You can give a damn. But then we can clearly see through this psycho babble and the institution of destruction of the so-called blacks and Native Americans minds. All through history, this man knew that we need to take images and create these images. So this person will believe this is their master and this is their Lord. And this is nothing new, right? Going back to Serapis Christi, going back to the Greeks, the Romans, Egypt, Babylon, they built gods. And what did they do? They created images. So you worship that image. So why would you say that the color doesn't matter if you're dealing with an image of something satanic or, or evil worship? That is an altar to the, on the left-hand side to other gods. But do you get these Christians? That's what I said. Gino Jennings can't wipe off all the Christianity. He can't, he can't seem to shake the Christian part of it. Right? Let's go to 2 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians 2 and 10 and 4. Okay? For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through Yahweh to the pulling down of the strongholds, right? To the pulling down of the strongholds, casting down imaginations of these images and every, and, and every high thing that exalteth itself against the knowledge of Yahweh and bringing into captivity every thought to obedience of Yahweh, Yahweh Shai. So you can't sit here and have your loved one pass and he's a six foot five 280 pound very black dark man right but then you go to the funeral it's a big it's a little five foot hundred pound asian man is everybody going to have a fit about that absolutely so so why would we treat or even think of the most high son like that they literally took the image of Yahweh and created and made the image for themselves 
all for the uh, the purpose of enslaving you. Now he, now you have our people sitting here saying it doesn't matter what he looked like. But do you see the destruction that it did? See, this guy doesn't care. He got followers. He's got the charismatic, you know, thing going on, the little act. So, of course, this guy, he's got his follower. He's in his own little kingdom. But what about the rest of the people, man? What about the rest of the people that see this BS of him saying, forget the images, forget the colors, forget who it, it just what he did. Well, if that was the case, see, the most high wouldn't have brought him here in the flesh. In fact, let's get another scripture on that. This guy's, I'm just going as I go along. This guy's completely off and out of his mind. There's no doubt about that. And to show you the phoniness of it, this guy clearly acknowledged that Yahawasha was a black man, the one you call Jesus. But then he goes on to say, I don't care about that. We know he was black. He was from where the, uh, you know, the Nazarites, he was a Nazarite. He was black. We know this. So the people of that area, that is part of uh, uh, pulling down the strongholds. That is a part of cleaning up the history. When you think of so-called black history, Israelite history, because it's not all about black, that is the lies, man. We can't accept those lies. It's like somebody beating you down, you know, doing all these things to you. Then the truth come out, and do you say, well, don't worry about it. You're out of your mind, man. 1 John 4 and 2. Hereby know ye that the spirit of Yahweh, every spirit that confesseth, that Yahweh Shah is coming to flesh is of Yahweh, right? And everyone that confesseth not, right, is not of Yahweh, and this is the spirit of an antichrist. We have heard that it should come, and even now already is in the world, like many antichrists. So this man is an antichrist. He's not concerned about the flesh of Yahweh Shah, man. Now, we do understand it, it, it was about his works. But the Most High deals with perfection, man. And his son being brought to die for the nation of Israel and you sitting up there taking the images of Yahweh and making him a so-called white man, right, is a disturbance, man. Anyway, to go on, he said, God doesn't have damn in his name. <laughs> does this man even read the Bible? The Most High does condemn. Psalms, Psalms 47 and 2. For the Lord Most High is terrible. He is a great king over all the earth. He lifts up, he brings down. 1 Samuel 2 and 6. That's that Christian dogma, man. That Christian, yeah, you know, I, I, I got to keep the smooth words going. But I'm going to try to tweak it and keep be a little righteous according to the laws and try to do the right thing with his slick suit on with his obelisks around his neck. You know, this is what these guys do, man. Where is say to do that? And these people all in there, you know, that's why the scriptures say that men, in the last days many shall come, uh, many false Christ messiahs shall arise and deceive many. That's this guy. Now, as crazy as it is, there's so many different doctrines. They will say it's us, and other people say it's them, or other people say that and this all over the place. But you got to pray to the Lord, man. Something should have clicked in your mind when he sat up there and said, it doesn't matter what Yahweh Shah looked like, even after they painted all those pictures and, and confused us and destroyed us with those uh, images, right? And then he says that we don't, uh, we stand on the street corners cursing. That was kind of an old thing. We don't curse everybody out, you know, anymore. But that was the um, the oppression, man. We got wiser, you know. The scripture says, Isaiah 58 and 1, cry aloud, spare not. Lift up thy voice like a trumpet and show my people their trans transgression. This is the English language, man. Most high, Yahweh Shai, read Matthew 23. When he called them hypocrites, Right? He called them thieves and robbers. Why do you think he got hung on the cross? Or the crooks, as I say. Why do you think they hung him, hung him on the tree? Let me say that. Why do you think our people were so against him? 
because he was getting on them, man. He was getting on them. This guy doesn't even know what cursing really is. The most high cursed us, man. This is crazy. This is crazy that this man, I guess he's got to keep that that um, charismatic act going on. And then the people in the background, that's right, that's right. You know what I'm saying? Kind of got that, uh, that uh, what's his name? that um, Muhammad thing going on or whatever. <laughs> they, got that, they got that kind of thing. That's what it reminds me of, the, the guys in the back and the, the Louis Farrakhan's, you know. That's, that's what it seems like. But that's these guys. Let's go to Math, uh, 1 Maccabees 3 and 48. It says, Wherefore the Israelites assembled themselves together and came to Masfa, over against Jerusalem, for in Masfa was the place where they prayed aforetime in Israel. Then they fasted that day and put on sackcloth and cast ashes upon their heads and rent their clothes and laid open the books of the law wherein the heathen had sought to paint the likeness of their images. This is the art imitating life. This is why Eve worships and our women worship Sezra and, and his kind. On your money, it said, in God we trust. And that was an image. That was the breaking down, or well, biggest part of breaking down our mindset. And our people looked at them dollar bills. And they saw the white man's face on there. And they said, uh-oh, this must be God. Anyway, that's all I have on that, Shalom.